All right, today I'm gonna to be talking about spotted salamanders and how to care for them and how to set up their tank. I need to clean mine anyways, so I might as well make a video out of it. Uh, I got two right here, they're young. I found them, they're probably like half the size. But uh, about that, um, I wouldn't buy spotted salamanders if you don't already have one, I wouldn't purchase them. Cause that's like, people will go out and collect like hundreds of them and just sell them all for really cheap. I personally wouldn't support that. I would just go out and find like, find some spot that has them a lot, like has a lot of them and they're common. And I would catch a small one, like no bigger than this. Cause you don't want to take out the breeding adults from that place. Uh, I found probably like 30 of that size. And I was like, all right, like there's tons like, and I really wanted to keep them for a while. So I might as well take one or two. Um, for tank size for them, I wouldn't go any smaller than a 10 gallon tank or like a 10 gallon aquarium. For a adult, I would say like a 20 gallon long would be perfect. Um, for a screen lid for those, most of them have screen lids. You probably have to cover half of it with like plastic or glass or something like that because you'll lose all that humidity that they require. Uh, I personally use a bin, like a tote or like a, just like a, uh, bin with like a little clip on lid and then I drill holes on the top for ventilation and you keep a lot more of the humidity that way. For my salamanders they're still pretty small so I feed them mostly crickets but you can also feed them like mealworms, small dubia roaches, uh, like red worms or like cut up night crawlers. Um, it's really fun to watch them eat actually because they're very cryptic animals like you don't see them very much in your tank that's why I use a bin because it's not like it needs to look nice it just needs to keep them healthy. And uh, it's really fun. I put them in this little plastic, uh, like cricket carrier type thing. And uh, I just stick them in here with some food and it'll walk right by and then they'll lap it up. Like they never miss. It's really awesome. Cause you kind of think of them as being slow moving creatures, but when there's food involved, they do not hesitate. But uh, for the adults, I would feed them like medium sized doobie roaches super worms, like night crawlers, and large crickets, of course. And uh, for mine, I feed them every like two to three days, but as an adult, I'd probably say lean more towards like three to four days between feedings. Uh, with the water for these guys, you need to make sure you either condition it or that you uh, buy spring water from the store. And I can show you guys actually what I personally do is uh, I just get like an empty, like one gallon thing from like milk or water. And then I just put a gallon of tap water and then I treat it with my uh, conditioner, which I can show right now. So this is just what I do. Um, I just keep it in this and then if I need to refill their water dish or like their misting bottle, I'll just use this water. So that's what I recommend doing. For their humidity, you probably want it anywhere from like, um, like 60 to 90%, probably more like towards like 75, 80%. Uh, because they can always dirt, like bury down in the substrate if they need to be more humid or go in their water dish or whatever if they really need moisture. But uh, for temperature, I like to keep them around like 65 to 70 degrees. It gets a little colder at night, so probably like 60. But I would not go any higher than like 80. That's That can be dangerous for your salamander. And uh, they really do not like heat, so they like to be cool. In their tank... I'd probably give them around like three to four inches of substrate just so they can burrow, like get whatever little microclimate they want. And then I'd also add like tree bark and little branches and rocks. Um, you have to have a water dish and make sure that water's conditioned. Um, that's pretty much all that you need in the tank. You can put like fig plants or whatever, but I keep mine in a little tote. So it's not like the tank's gonna look nice. I just want them to be healthy in there. So that's pretty much all the basic information I have for you. Now let's get on to actually cleaning and resetting up the tank. So this is the old substrate. I'm just simply gonna dump it outside. Then I'll have to rinse this off, but then we'll be ready to set it up. So I'm gonna try and hide the dirty dishes. I'm just trying to get as much of this out as I can. If 
then I'll probably have to wipe it out. It's about good. I just went ahead and wiped it out off camera because I'm sure you didn't click on the video to watch some guy wipe dirt out of a bin. But this is what I use for my salamanders. This is what the lid looks like. It's my hand. It's perfect for them. When they grow, I'll probably have to get another one or I'll just get a bigger tank and then they'll both live in it together. But this is a hydrometer and I highly recommend you use one for these guys because it's very important to know the humidity. And this is the basic stuff that I have for them. We just need a water dish, some twigs, uh, tree bark, rocks, and some little pebbles. And then I got some acorn caps just for fun. And then some dead leaves. So now I just poured in some substrate. This is Eco Earth. Uh, it comes in little bricks, like dehydrated bricks. And then you hydrate it and it's way more worth it for your money than getting the bags of it. I wanna get a decent amount of it in there so they can brew. Maybe a little more. That should be good. If they were adults, I would make it deeper so they can burrow further since they're bigger, but this should be perfect for now. So with these guys, I don't really like to uh, put too much thought into setting up their tank because these guys live on the forest floor and it's all completely random. It's all covered in leaves, fallen branches and everything. So I just like to kind of throw everything in there. So I'm just gonna get some of my bark just kind of pile it up on top of each other like in the wild. I just like to kind of throw everything around. Some of these little twigs and stuff. Acorn caps. Now the water dish I like to put in somewhere accessible and kind of away from everything so you're not trying to dig around just to get your water bowl out because you need, do need to switch it pretty often and i do kind of want to make a little pile of rocks in this corner because i have noticed that they really like rocks for some reason i never find them under rocks outside but my salamanders if i make like a little cave out of these rocks they always are in there so i like to do that personally So I do like to give them a choice between rock or bark because they think they do have their preference. Then I'll just toss these ones around. Throw some little pebbles in there. Then I'll put some dead leaves. And then finally these twigs. Looks good to me. I think they'll like their clean tank. Let's go ahead and introduce these guys. Put one on this side. Or is this gonna sit there? Kinda wanted them to move. Oh, good job. Yeah, these guys are awesome pets. One thing I would like to say is I wouldn't recommend feeding them in the tank, just tossing a bunch of insects in here and letting them go wild just because uh, if the insects die, like a cricket dies or something, it'll attract insects and mold because they're in a very moist environment and it does not take long for like fruit flies and mold to take over. Like you'll open the lid and just a bunch of stuff will fly out and you do not want that. So recently I have been feeding them in this little tote only. I'm gonna grab my other one. These guys are awesome. Put them over by the rocks. So this should be a suitable tank for at least a couple of months until they grow a little bigger. All I need to do is fill that water dish and it's done. Oh, I do actually want to give them a quick mist because the soil is still pretty dry. This hasn't been misted before. That should be good. And with this bin, I only have to mist it probably every like five or six days. So it's really nice. So you could like leave on vacation and you wouldn't even have to worry about these guys. So you could just mist it a good amount. If you needed, you could just throw some food in here and then you're good. They're very low maintenance, I'd say. If you have them in a bin, if you have them with a screen lid, you'll have to mist it 
something like two to three times a day probably. But this is a perfect setup for these guys for now at this size. Um, now since it's winter, I can't really go out and like find animals like I would like to. So in the winter, I'll probably do more videos about my pets because there's really no way for me to go out and find turtles and snakes and stuff when it's like 20 degrees. But these guys are going to get comfortable. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.